Hello, I'm Courtney. What's up? And today I'm going to be doing Crackpot series on Wayfair by Alexandra Bracken. If you do not know what Wayfair is, Wayfair is the sequel to Passenger, which I just read, and Wayfair is coming out January 3rd, 2017. But if you don't know what Passenger is, Passenger is the first book in this duology, so Wayfair is the second and final book in this series, which that's so sad because Passenger is so good. But if you want to know more about Passenger, I will link my book talk down below so you can learn more about what Passenger is about. Today I'm gonna be sharing my thoughts and feels and theories on the Wayfair cover and excerpt which was just released a few days ago on Entertainment Weekly. So if you have not seen the cover yet I am going to show it to you right now and I will also link the article to the cover and excerpt down below so let's show the cover. <laughs> Isn't it so beautiful? It's just, it's beautiful. I don't think it's as beautiful as Passenger. Like, Passenger is gorgeous, but this one's still gorgeous too, but not as beautiful as Passenger. So, my theories on this is, well, I'm pretty sure this tree represents Linden, the Linden family tree, because the tree is their symbol. So this is something having to do with Linden's. What could it be? I don't know. I just know the tree. It, it, it has to be the Linden thing, right? There's like a storm happening, I think. Like, if you look closely, you can see lightning behind the tree. And then there's like all these birds like trying to fly into the thing, which I don't understand that. This is so confusing. When I first saw this cover, I immediately thought it was the Astrolable, but I was just like, it can't be. This can't be the Astrolable, can it? I don't know, I think this is something different, but I have no idea what this is. So the only thing I have to say about this cover is that I think the tree in the middle represents Linden. So we're gonna be learning some stuff about the Linden family, which is that exciting because I'm very confused on the Linden family, especially Rose. She's so confusing. I need like a, bio a biography about her. <laughs> now I'm going to talk about the excerpt. So if you have not read the excerpt yet and you do not want to be spoiled, I will leave now. So just go click the link down below and read the excerpt and then come back here so we can discuss it together. Okay, so an overall summary of this excerpt is that we read from Etta, and Etta is in San Francisco, 1906, which one, I love San Fran, two, 1906 in San Fran equals the 1906 earthquakes, and you know, the, what's the word? It was, you know, the it had a record for something. I don't remember what the record was, the highest level or something? Now, I'm a little confused on why she's in 1906 because at the end of Passenger they were talking about since Etta disappeared she would go back to the common event on the timeline so is this the common event like I don't know I think this they were talking about the time this might be the altered timeline not the original I don't know but in this excerpt we see Etta is in this room and then this young man shows up and immediately when this young man shows up, I'm just like, aha, it's Julian Ironwood. Then guess what? It's Julian Ironwood. So we get to see Julian in this excerpt. And I, to be honest, I don't, I don't hate the guy. Like, I mean, I feel like I should because he was a pain to Nicholas and treated Nicholas like servant, even though Nicholas saw Julian as a brother. And, but he was being funny and how it's just like I'm supposed to hate you but I kind of don't. I felt so bad for Julian when um Julian was like um did I have like a memorial or something I never heard anything about it and it's just like I don't know I'm assuming and then Julian's just like it's not that it matters and I was just like oh this is so sad. Julian goes and talks about how the thorns were responsible for orphaning me and 
He's like, three years ago, they used a passage to New York in 1940 to set a fire in New, New York's World Fair, which, you know, that famous New York 1940 fire. I've heard about that, so it's like, grandfather's people did that, which I find that hilarious. But then he's, like, at that time, he was falling down the mountainside. And so, okay, he's like, I was born in 1941, and then I went through passages to 1939. And so 1939 was the last common year between the old timeline and the new one. And I, I'm just sitting here reading this and I'm just like, wait, you were born in 1941, but you went back to 1939. It just, what? Okay, literally, I did not think he was born in 1941. I thought he was born in the 1700s. How, how was he born in the 1940s? Like, but his, his parents, Augustus, right? His dad. He was born in the 1700s, right? What? This, this makes no sense. Anyway, so we find out that 1939 is the last common year between the old timeline and the new one. So, and that, and that, and then it's kind of just like, Edda is like, but I was born after 1940 and she wasn't orphaned and then Julian's just like, your present self was at the time I was orphaned. There must have not been a passage. Time must have had no way to eject you to the last coming years since it wasn't linked to the other passages. And he's just like, it's rare, but it happens. And this is so confusing. Edda is saying that this makes sense because her mother had only created a passage in what had been her present day in New York three years after Julian had been orphan and buta. There would have been no way for her to have been thrown back in time when that change had occurred. So it makes sense to Etta, but it doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> Etta keeps thinking about this and then she starts thinking about Nicholas and starts getting really mad and then <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> Julian was talking and then <laughs> Etta punched Julian in the face and Julian's just like, I'd like to get back to you. Holy God! And just, haha, <laughs> Julian, good line. Etta brings up Nicholas and Julian's just like, brother, like, what are you talking about? And he's just like, but how do you know Nick? But they don't get to talk about that because then all of a sudden people come in. Men are coming in and then one man comes in and Etta recognizes this man from the museum back in the 21st century at her performance and he's just like, oh, you recognize me? And then she was like, oh, I bumped into him and then it says he came running when she and Sophia had found Alice dying in a pool of her own blood, almost as if he known it might happen or he'd been the one to pull the trigger. And I'm just like, I'm just reading this and I'm just like, oh my gosh. She doesn't know. The guy's all like, oh, you are you need to come with me. And Etta's just like, why do I have to go with you? I don't even know who you are. And then where, where is it? She's just like, what right do you have to order me around? And then the guy's leaving. And then the end of the excerpt goes, my name is Henry Hemlock and you're here at my mercy, the man said, and you will do as I say, because I am your father and we have much to discuss. So Etta finds her daddy, which that, that happened quicker than I thought. I thought it would take like a long time for Etta to find Henry, but nope, Etta finds him like right in the beginning. And I'm just like, well, that didn't take long. So Etta has met Henry Hemlock and I don't know what to think of Henry Hemlock, to be honest. I, I need to learn more about him. We just know that he's her father and that he was there that night when Alice died. And he's the leader of the Thorns. Like, that's all we know. I just, I need a biography about him. So what are my theories from this excerpt? Well, I think Henry is going to tell Etta of stuff about Rose and more of the time travel stuff and you know talk about the passages in this whole timeline deal but Etta is gonna know her dad and then Rose is gonna show up and then there's gonna be a family reunion again it's gonna be so exciting and then we have this whole Julian situation and Julian I don't know if Julian is gonna help us or not I hope he does cuz you know maybe Etta will tell him 
found Nicholas, and then Julian will be on our side because he knows that Etta knows Nicholas, and maybe they'll convince him to help us. I don't know. I just like, hope oh, Julian is a good person. But I'm so excited for Wayfair. Why do I have to wait till 2017? But that, my friends, were my crackpot theories on Wayfair, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did like this video, give it a big thumbs up. If you want to watch more videos dealing with Wayfair, you can click the subscribe button down below. I'm Courtney, and I'll see you all next time with a new video up soon, so I will see you then, so goodbye! Yo!